Hello YouTube and welcome back to the ASX Portfolio channel. So today I've got something really exciting. We're going to be creating uh, in Python the Efficient Frontier. So I know many of you have probably heard about the Efficient Frontier. We did a video covering um, the modern portfolio theory and what that's all about with Harry Markovitz. Um, so for a given portfolio, what we want, we want to maximize the return while minimizing our risk. So if you're in the area of finance, you would have seen this Excel um, representation before of the Efficient Frontier. Now, this is a simple implementation where we've only considered a portfolio of three stocks or three assets. So this makes it easy because we can use the formula for portfolio variance, as you can see in the top right hand side. Now using that, that formula, it makes it very easy to then be able to calculate all the different permutations of portfolios and work out what our minimum, uh, minimum variance is for a given level of return. And that's where you can see the red line as the efficient frontier. But what happens if we don't want to be restricted to a two asset portfolio or a three asset portfolio? What happens if we want to include more? Well, it's a good thing that that portfolio optimization that we talked about in uh, modern portfolio theory does hold true to any number of assets. All we need to do is find a way where we're able to solve this optimization problem. And today we're going to do that in Python. Now, I don't, want to, I don't want to discourage you from trying to do it in Excel. It can be done, of course. Um, Excel has excellent solvers. But um, right now, I, I enjoy using Python. And um, I think with the ease of when you find out how easy it is to implement in Python, you'll be using it too. So today, we're just going to focus on part one, which was importing the data and um, rearranging and getting portfolio weights and returns. Excellent, so I hope you enjoy. Let's jump into the actual content. So we've jumped into Visual Studio Code here and we've named the Python file EF app. So first thing we're gonna do is import our dependencies. Um, to note, I've just started up a Conda environment called Efficient for Efficient Frontier. Um, and we're gonna add the environments that we need, the dependencies that we need. So we're gonna import NumPy as NP. I already have that. Um, import date time as DT. Already have that. Um, but what I don't have and what you likely don't have is pandas data reader. Um, data as PDR. Save. So we're going to go down to our terminal and we're going to um, pip install within our environment the pandas data reader. And that's going to add it to our environment and we're going to be able to use, use that now. So once that's complete running, um, or even if it isn't, we're going to import data. How are we going to do that? We're going to create a function called get data. This is going to take stocks, start date, and a end date. So that's going to output a table or um, stock data. And the way we're going to get that is pdr.getDataYahoo stocks start date is going to be start and the end date is going to be end. So that's essentially saying I want to download this stocks um, and I want to get it between these two dates. So let's now, um, yeah, let's just see what that looks like. So we're going to return stock data. So let's define a stock list. We're going to have CBA, BHP, and Telstra. So I know that we need to add .ax to the end of all our stocks, um, just so that Yahoo data is referenced correctly. So we're going to do a list comprehension. So we're going to go stock plus 
dot ax for stock in stock list. So we can just update stock list and that's going to easily import it for us. Now we need start and end dates. So start date is going to be equal to um, dt time. Oh, well, actually, you know what? We should define the end date first. So dt time, let's go date time dot now. And let's go start date is actually a date defined before that period. So end date minus dt dot time delta. And we want that in days. Let's just go one year ish. Excellent. OK, so let's test our function. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to print the results of our get data function. So our stocks is going to be equal to our stock list here. So stocks equals stocks. Start is going to be equal to our start date and end is going to be equal to our end date. Awesome. So let's run that Python EF app. Let it churn its, churn its data. Bang. Output. So as you can see, we've got um, close, high, low, open, volume, etc. Adjusted close. Um, what we're really interested in is just the close information. So we can see from here, let's go stock data <coughs> and let's only retain the close information. I'm going to do that by just referencing the column header close. Excellent. So let's run that again. Excellent. So now we have our dates, data frame defined for CB, A, BHP, and Telstra. Excellent. So let's now, um, what do we want? We want a couple of things. We first want the returns of that um, data frame. So stock data, um, what we're going to do is use the function percent change. So I'll show you what that does in a second. That's just going to change our data here to percent changes. So let's print that out and run the function. I like running the function conti continually and seeing what changes you've made. So you can see here that um, we've got NA now for the first column because obviously for a percent change you need to use one of the column and lose that degrees of freedom. So now we've got our percent changes in the data frame. Now from our percent changes, we can get the mean returns over those time periods. Mean returns, and that's going to be returns dot mean. And we returns dot mean, what happened there? And we want the covariance matrix. Um, so we want to understand how these assets um, are correlated together with each other. And that's just COV. Awesome. So let's just return the mean returns now. Yep. So we can see the mean returns there. Negative. Oh, it's been a good year, ASX. Thank you for that. Um, and the covariance matrix. Let's print that out like that. So we're going to return the mean and the covariance matrix. So that looks like a pretty neat function now. Um, what else do we need? Well, let's also go for portfolio performance. So let's say that I had um, CBA, BHP, and Telstra. How am I going to work out what my returns are in standard deviations if I held 10% of CBA, 50% of BHP, and the remainder, Telstra. So we're going to create this function called portfolio performance that just calculates all that stuff. So of course, we need portfolio weightings. So we'll call that weights. We're going to have to bring in the mean returns, of course, of each one, and the covariance matrix. 
So what do we want to do? All we want to do is for a portfolio with these different weights and allocations, we want to get this standard deviation and the returns. So for the returns, we're going to use NumPy and we're going to sum the mean returns with the weights. And of course, because we got everything in daily changes, this is going to be daily weights. So we're going to actually multiply that through by the time um, the days of well, the trading days in the year 252. And for standard deviations, we actually have to do something a little bit more unique. And um, that's the formula up here on the screen now. Um, so you'll remember from uh, the Modern Portfolio Theory um, YouTube video that we had to actually define variance with this formula here. So weights, transpose, matrix um, with covariance matrix and weights. So that's actually a quadratic um, equation. So what we're going to hit use here is the MP dot. So that's how we can multiply those matrix matrices with each other in that fashion. So we're going to take the weights array and we're going to take the transpose of that. So W dot T and we're going to NP dot dot. We're going to take the covariance matrix and the weights. So again, just looking at the formula in the top right hand corner we've got the weights transpose multiplied by the covariance matrix multiplied by the weights and you just have to do them together here with the NP dot so I've done the covariance matrix weights together and then I've done the weights with the product of that to get the dimensionality right so we've taken the square root of that and again in a similar fashion, we're going to have to take the square root of 252. And that's because the volatility times by the square root of time rule. Square root of time and for annualized returns, that's 252. So we're going to return. We're going to return the returns and then the standard deviations. Cool. So that looks pretty great. Let's um, let's define this weights matrix then. Let's just think about the dimensionality. So can I have that as a list? Yes, I can. Weights equal. So let's just say I had thirty percent, thirty percent, and forty percent. So let's test this out. So I'm going to get my mean returns and covariance matrix from this get data function. Then I'm going to calculate the portfolio returns and standard deviations with this formula. Weights mean returns and cove matrix. Cool. So let's return or oh, let's print sorry. Print returns and standard deviation. Let's see if that does what we expect it to do. Of course, the list is not able to do that. So numpy array it is. So just turn that list into a numpy array. And bang. Wow, they are terrible returns and a lot of <laughs> portfolio variants. So that's just reminded me those numbers are pretty ugly. So on our print, um, we're going to times that by 100% and we'll probably also round that. Um, so round to two decimal places and we're going to round this times it by 100, two decimal places. 
So that's cool. We're, right now, our functionality, we have a portfolio um, made up of three stocks or whatever, um, and we've assigned weights for those stocks, and we're able to calculate the returns and standard deviation with the portfolio performance. So just reiterating what we've done, we've made a get data function so we can import you know, a list of stocks that we want to um, get data for, um, start and end dates. So super simple. Um, the other thing is that we have a portfolio performance um, function now where we can send a, uh, an array, <laughs> as we've found out, of weights and um, have the mean returns and covariance matrix defined in there and get the portfolio returns and standard deviations. So super cool, uh, you can play around with that, but in the next video, part two, we're gonna actually start towards optimizing this portfolio to maximize returns first. So thank you very much for listening. If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe.